Actually, a lot of people are, you know, saying eight. But I, I think it's a bold step from CAF. For a 10, because maybe as they're looking at 10, they might finally get eight. Because you're asking yeah. for three more. So Ten Africa step, is yeah. asking for five more. Double, double. Yes, it's going to happen. <laughs> but but um, a, a quick one talking about uh, politics. Um, it, it will be uh, Gianni Vantino is going to be uh, in Zimbabwe today to attend the birthday party of Philip Shiangwa, the head of COSAFA, also head of the uh, Zimbabwe uh, uh, FA. And that, you know, it gets interesting talking about the politics of the CAF uh, presidency. You know, COSAFA is behind. Ahmad Ahmad, they are a block that has 16 votes, and they're saying we're, we're going for um, to support Ahmad Ahmad. Over the weekend, um, Issa Ayati was in South Africa, and they made us believe that the CAF president, talking about Jacob Zuma, is supporting um, Issa Ayati uh, because uh, in the pictures that we saw, you had uh, Fikile Mbalula, Danny Jordan, uh, the CEO of SAFA, everybody was there. But now, uh, news coming out of South Africa say, look, no, we, we're going to. Zuma is not supporting anybody. anybody. <laughs> Whatever is said there is the same thing he's going to say to anybody um, that, that, that comes. The party I was talking about that had um, Shiangwa's uh, party, 24 uh, members of CAF okay. are there. All you need to win that 20. election <laughs> is 28, 28. votes. <laughs> and you have 24 guys invited. Already. Nigeria, we, we, have, of course, we, we have shown our hand, we've played our card. Yeah, we, 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 we know that yes. we are not for Isaiah to. I, I hope the bubble does not burst in, in a way that will rub <laughs> off. But, but we've, we've shown our hand, we've played our card, and we'll see what happens um, in Next, that one. Next, in that one. Well, it's kind of, the politics is getting deeper. But I, I think, you know, people are talking about change. Maybe it's time for Isaiah to just step down and allow someone to come in and make cough. And so many traditions, we've seen it. Even the English FA, the oldest, they're even saying they need reforms and all that. They want younger people on board and the 80s and those in their 60s and all that. I think it's time for them to just, okay, change just step down. Yeah, change, change is happening everywhere. everywhere. They just want everywhere. something new. Now, talking about your dearest Budapest that have pulled out <laughs> of the 2024 Olympics. Now, we just have Paris and, of course, LA. Now, if you look at LA and Paris now, these, these two cities, Paris, we know the the whole terrorist thing and all that that's mm -hmm. been happening. And LA, with the travel ban, we don't really know what's going to come up with Donald Trump and the others and all that. It's still in court. We'll see the Muslim bans um, from countries, you know, if it's going to... Big question marks. If it's going to be. So the only country that was kind of free was even Budapest. That's why, you know, I will see Vice President Koti came out to say the other time that it's going to be very sad, you know, and unfortunate for this city to actually pull out. I was looking at them because if you check the whole city, fine, they may not have the money, so much money to host 20, 24 Olympics. But the government had said they can actually do it, but the people don't want it. That the only city that's kind of free from controversy and all that, that can, you know, successfully host it. The others... They just have to put so many things in place, security-wise and political you know, decisions. See, and interestingly, you can look at this thing uh, two ways. Uh, first, you, you have to be smart. If you're in government, you have to be smart. The Brazilian government stuffed it down the throat of their people. <laughs> forced, going, it forced it down. Forced it down. We are going to host the World Cup. We are going to host the Olympics. The president went for it. Um, you, you can say it's unconnected, but somehow, somehow it's related. And... A lot of people are complaining that all the facilities, huge sums of money, all the facilities are not in good shape just a year uh, after the Olympics. So, so the people are like... A year? Less than six months. Really so the people are like, months. we're not going to spend all this money that wouldn't benefit the people directly. And less than a year into it, we're, we're seeing um, all, all these kinds um, of things. Then, you, you, then the, another interesting issue is the issue of stability that, that you pointed out. Initially, when, all this, uh, when the bidding process started... I mean, you, you have to admit that Paris and Los Angeles were the favorites. But, you know, it, it begins to have some sort of coloration with, you know, the picture that you just painted now um, about, you know, what could look like um, instability. I mean, the things that happened in Paris, it rocked our world, you know, in our imagination. We never thought something like that yeah, uh, could happen. happen. Then the United States of America, you know, the unpredictability of the, uh, the situation and, and you know that. So this comes as a big blow to the IOC that are struggling to have willing bidders. That's the problem now. A lot of people are scared uh, of the backlash, uh, the huge amount of money that is going to be spent. And the people are always going to be quick to point out that, look, this money could serve other purposes. And, and that, that's why uh, Budapest, 
um, are, are in the picture now. And, and it's, it's really sad because you, you want to think that sporting events uh, are a big draw and yes. it, it should tower above all of these things. But unfortunately, um, we, we have shown that um, it has shown that sporting events are not immune. Uh, there's no immunity from what is happening in our society. In our society, yeah. That's the view uh, from Paris, a beautiful city where everyone would love to. But we'll just wait and see, keep our fingers crossed and see if it's going to be Paris that will host it or early. It's kind of very tight now. But Paris, from what they've done, the bid they've submitted and all that, it tells you a whole lot that this might just be the city that will get it out. You move over to early and see how beautiful the whole city looks. But then you keep asking yourself, political instability and everything you, and all you that. You know, what, what we have said, it? what we have said, you know, well, a lot of people may not also agree, <laughs> yeah. uh, it is, looks like a shade somehow. Yeah. But when you look at facilities, when you look at uh, infrastructure, um, everything, it favors these two cities. Yeah, of course. But you just have to throw in some of the things that, that you said. I mean, looking at the pictures alone, you could close your eyes and want to give it. Uh, I remember when we were growing up, people would say, see Paris and die. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was it then. And, and LA, yeah, we've heard uh, many songs about course. how beautiful um, <laughs> LA is. But then again, you have to consider those, those, those factors because um, it is humans that will come for these sporting events. And of course, people will be affected if there's any.